I'm Alexis Ohanian. I've started startups, invested in them, and met amazing people using the internet to change the world. Our generation has an opportunity unlike any other. We can create small empires without anyone's permission. Tribeca. Now this neighborhood is better known for celebrity sightings than startups, but right here in the shadow of One World Trade Center, four guys fled a large tech company on the West Coast to move into a tiny studio apartment to build the iOS application that would make people rethink the iPad forever. People think they're not artistic or that they can't create. And one of the most fascinating things for me in creating paper was that, you know, we'd show it to people. It's a beautiful application in which truly you can use it. Anyway, I mean, we made it as easy as we could. Mm -hmm. People look at it and their reaction is, you know, their shoulders drop and then they say, it's like, oh, I can't, I can't create. Some people see the blank page and are intimidated by it. They had their handwriting criticized for years. We're never able to master things like painting. And so we've actually put a lot of time, both on the design side, but a lot of time on the engineering side, trying to figure out how we can create some very smart algorithms, almost Guitar Hero style, that make your drawing and your sketching and your note taking just look great. So this isn't like paint by number. No, I mean, you're still very much in control, Yeah. but the watercolor itself, you know, it doesn't, you don't wind up with the brown puddle that most people do when they're yeah. playing with watercolor. It's a sore subject for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, what your background, what your, you know, degree of art skills are. You know, if you, if you put some time into it and you work with a, the right tool, um, you can create some amazing things. Uh, the one thing that was very clear, I mean, they've worked on productivity tools of one nature, one form or nature for probably 12, 13 years. So it's, it's certainly a long, it's not that I woke up one morning and said, oh, I want to work on tools. <laughs> I've been working on tools and that's, yeah. that's kind of, that is my passion. And, but then sort of the mechanics of starting a company, that was, that was more of a question around timing. And a couple things just started moving the right way, iPad. Uh, and then you look at, okay, so we did have the space in New York City. Uh, Andrew was here. Julian was freelancing at that time. So it was just the right moment and then we had to go. So you guys, you, you became, were you, were you friends first or had you started working together at Microsoft, was it? Yes. Uh, and then developed a friendship or how'd that go down? That's right. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, how do you make friends? How do you find friends? It's, 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 uh, we all at one point in our lives had worked at Microsoft and we, we had an intersection there. When I think of great design, there are a lot of companies that I think of before it's not the first Microsoft. Microsoft. It's not the first. No. Help me understand how you all were existing within Microsoft. <laughs> so there was a small team uh, called Pioneer Studios at Microsoft. That was sort of a kind of skunk works uh, team there looking at future products. Uh, one of the products there was Courier, which was sort of a two-screen tablet device. And George, John, and myself all worked on that project. And Julian was someone that we knew through other friends. And so when we kind of went our separate ways uh, and came back together for 53, we just kind of tapped on you know the best people that we knew. By the time we started 53, at last count, I think we built over 67 products. Right. And you know from Connect, to, to game controllers, to office, a broad range. When you say built, are we talking about like built, shipped, like finished, like, like design, done? Concept, yeah. Done, concept. Yeah, yeah. that's so, amazing. What was the moment when you were like, all right, you know what? Forget it, I got a comfortable job here, but you know what? I want to go live in a crammed apartment in Tribeca. I had actually already left Microsoft. I was doing some consulting, sort of feeling around, trying to find okay the right opportunity. I left Microsoft because I um, just wanted to really, really put something out there that I felt like I connected with yeah. my users. I didn't know what that was gonna be. I had no idea how I was gonna get there. But uh, I just, you know, finally threw myself into the unknown and you know, waited to, to see what would happen. We met late at night. I had burning the midnight oil, right? It's the in folks the office, in the office, and well, we're in, in Seattle, downtown Seattle, working on a number of projects, and you know, that's kind of when you start looking up and you look around and just see people that you so deeply respect. These are the folks that I was learning from. And at some point, you're just 
you realize that I could, I could have such a more interesting life if I can spend more time with those folks. Mm -hmm. And that's when you want to start. That for us, that's, that's when we wanted to start a company. Now, you guys have obviously taken over a number of floors in this building, um, but, but the fact that it started here is, is special because you leave Microsoft behind, you had moved to New York here in Tribeca, and then you coaxed all of your former coworkers and friends to come like camp out in your apartment. Is there, where's the, the bedroom is over there, right? Yeah. So yeah, it got, it a, little bit, it got a little rough. Did you? At 2 a.m. sometimes I had to kick out everyone, yeah. Yeah, so how did you, how did you convince them? like to do this. You know? Uh, you, you know, it was more, we had to do it. Yeah. It was more, you know, when you look at Ju Julian, John, Andrew and us, I mean, we just wanted to get this started. Yeah. And you do whatever it takes. And it's, look, it's New York City. How bad can it get? You know, when you look at what we're doing, which is trying to sort of revolutionize creativity, certainly New York City is probably the most creative city. We are the most creative people in the world. Right, it's true. We should, it's okay to say <laughs> that, I think. Um, and it's a creative, capital of the United States. And so it just made sense for us to be around that. And it's nice, I think, to get kind of a diverse mix of, you know, not only tech people, but design folks and art folks and business folks. So I feel like we have a, a much sort of more balanced environment here. I mean, our market is New York. You know, we create tools for people to get paid to think, people have a need to create. That's New York City. There are 3.2 million people who day in, day out, get paid to work in media, advertising, do consulting. You know, some of the best attorneys are here, engineers. I mean, it's such a broad, diverse population that have a need to create. And then we were thinking we're building a journal. We should build a journal, but, but we kept describing it like paper. Mm -hmm. And at some point, if we call it like paper, why don't we just call it paper? Uh -huh. So that's, but that was actually two weeks before we launched. I love, oh, dude, I can't tell you, Hitmonk was gonna be Bounce Pounce for a week or two, and then a week before launch it becomes Hitmonk, which is still weird, but better. Yeah, Bounce so, Pounce. Bounce Pounce. I think you, Adam, don't, you, don't, you don't want to Google that. No, no you don't. Well, so I couldn't help but notice a little something on your bookshelf that I'd hope you would uh, tell me a little more about. How would your friends at Microsoft react to this, this Apple Design Award? And this is heavy. This is. I could curl this. But yeah, so paper one, this is actually one of, uh, and it's for technical achievement and design, so the combination of that. And so, you know, first we were app of the week, then app of the month, and then we won an Apple Design Award, mainly because paper showed the way how you can use tablets or an iPad for, for creation. Okay, so this is where it all began, but yeah. it's since grown much bigger. Can you, uh, I guess, take me up to the next floor? Let's go, let's go. And how do the rest of the tenants feel about this? You know, we've taken over the building. So they have no say in this. It's they, just you know, there's no one else there. Right. This, is, this, is, this is our empire. This is very cool. So what you're seeing here is actually work by one of our designers. This is Alan's piece. And it, it, it explores the development of, of, of one of his pieces. It starts out, he starts drawing a dragon. And then he places this girl onto the dragon. At first it looks like the dragon's taking the girl for a ride. Yeah, she's just sort of chilling on she's it. She's chilling, right? But then the dragon becomes more fearful as he adds in the color. Yeah. In order to make sure that the dragon knows where it's going, the girl stands up. I like it. And then starts commanding the dragon. So it's, this is really how the creative process works. You sometimes don't really know what element is gonna take you forward or really shift the entire dialogue. And it's between between all of the elements, as you evolve it, right, you really discover what the true meaning of the true story is. So and by the end of it, you're riding the dragon. That, if you're lucky, I like that. It's actually been a little bit of a progression in this building. We started the floor below us in George's apartment. Then we uh, filled that space up, moved to this floor, which is essentially just a larger apartment. Mm -hmm. where, and, where are all the employees, by the way? Well, now we're also on the sixth floor, which is an even larger apartment. Yeah. But we've sort of worked our way back down here and have a small team here. This is where a lot of our app development happens. And so we've got development going on down here? Yeah, so we have the iOS development team here. Hey, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> so Alexis. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Now, you all have a very interesting balance, you almost have a designer for every developer, which is a pretty rare thing. Mm -hmm. Is there like a Jets, Sharks sort of dynamic to the office? How do you determine that balance? We try to hire engineers who are design minded. I mean, if you tried to work at this company and you didn't value design, mm -hmm. I think it could be a very challenging <laughs> You're pursuit. not going to have a good time. 
Yeah, because you'll, you'll get a lot of challenges dropped on your plate. Like this is how we'd like the design to be, but the engineering is extremely difficult. And if you're not you know, up to that challenge or you don't see the value in why it should be that way, then you probably won't be happy banging your head, banging your head on it. Right now, barriers are falling for creation all over, right? To, to get started, you need the SDK, and you could be building iOS apps in a few months. There are a lot of people out there, myself included, who are like, go build stuff, go launch stuff, go, go create. Yet, you know, you look at, at the majority of apps on the App Store, for instance, our apps, most people probably, will, they'll never get more than a few thousand downloads. For someone watching this who wants to have paper, uh, who wants to have that kind of success, is the lesson, keep launching stuff until it sticks, or, you know what, don't, don't launch that yet. Make sure it's really something great. And, and, and then how the hell do you know it's really something great? You know, we're sort of in an environment now where there's so much, so much mediocrity mm -hmm. that you really have to produce something amazing, something great to really rise above it. And so I do think it's worth kind of hanging on to your idea and spending a little bit more time polishing it mm -hmm. to really get it to a point that, you know, you feel like it's, it's going to say something new, it's going to tell a new story. Mm -hmm. And it's just extremely well executed, it's useful, um, and it can have a, a nice big impact. So when you told the landlord that you needed the top floor in addition to the other two, uh, was he pretty amenable? Yeah, I think he's happy. I mean, six floor walk up usually doesn't rent that quickly. Good point. Well, this is, yeah, so this is the top floor. Hey, 53. Hey, everybody. Sorry to distract you while you're busy working. Why do you guys, why do you guys work at a startup, right? Why, why is this something that you ended up in? I really like the idea of a maker driven company and a, a company where um, you know people are really using the software they're making. I thought there was something really special about that. It was really evident in like what the customers were making. So I, I actually picked up paper and started using it on day one and was just obsessed. I fell in love and I was like, these guys get it. They get creation on a tablet. So like perusing Tumblr and other social media outlets and just seeing what people were making was amazing and I just wanted to be a part of that. It was a lot of energy coming out of that space. Would you say you're the best artist here? No. <laughs> Prior to coming here, I worked for a lot of um, bigger like marketing companies. And so I had an opportunity where I was doing some consulting and I had an opportunity to really look where I wanted to go next. And uh, I wanted to do something that made a difference, as cliche as that might sound. I didn't want to be at a company where it's like, let's chase the next dollar and not really care about the consequences. And uh, I, this was an absolute perfect fit. See, I know you're serious because you have to wake up every morning and walk up seven flights of stairs <laughs> to get to your work. Right. So that's that. And I'm excited to right do there. it. You're excited to do it every time. <laughs> yeah. That's great. When you think about what paper as it stands right now is doing for people, the the idea at, at first blush of like, oh, here is here is an easy, beautiful, wonderful way to create art. Seems nice, but it seems like something only a bunch of art students might use, or only a bunch of like people who already are in a creative mindset would use. How do you think about this application when you're looking at a world of people, many of whom don't even consider themselves remotely artistic, who don't even think about themselves as creators? Mm -hmm. so why, why, why would you want to try to build a product that is automatically going to kind of alienate a majority of people? Well, I mean, the, the interesting thing is we built paper as sort of that bridge. Mm -hmm. And so we actually get a lot of people, you know, we get emails almost every week about people that tell us that like, I never thought I could sketch before, yeah. you know, until I tried paper. People have never gotten the right and positive and reinforcement. Mm -hmm. You know, because of SAT scores, because of GPAs, because of reading, writing, people think they know how to read and how to write and how to do math. Mm -hmm. I don't know many people who write well. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who can put together a great chicken scratch catch to communicate their idea much more efficiently. An emoticon, people know how to use. Mm. A smiley face, people know how to draw. Describing in words your emotional state, complicated. Mm. But yeah. people think they know how to do it. Why? Because they got grades, they got reinforcement, they got certifications. And this is, even on a much bigger level, when you think about how people communicate, it is visually first. We're visual learners, mm. right? We fail to educate our population, right? Our, like, we, we should all be fluent communicating in images. So when people say, I'm not creative, what they're saying is, I can't draw, or I don't know how to communicate visually. And I say our challenge is to make sure that everyone can, because it's going to transform the level and the quality of our ideas, how we work together, and how we get things done. 
Now it doesn't matter how beautiful your app is, if no one uses it, it doesn't really matter. The thing about paper that's so interesting is it's not just for artists. In fact, we're gonna meet a high school teacher named Brad who's using it to change education. Well, this is the first thing I did with paper uh, when it first came out. I was just noodling around and I wanted a, a quick way to make a, a little diary of my day. So this is actually goes on a Tumblr blog I have called 100% of my time. So what I do is just 10 lines, different colors, representing the percentage of my day that's taken up with these things. It's not necessarily time, sort of like Chinese miles. They're called Li. Chinese miles are longer going up than they are going down because it's a measure of distance and effort, right? Huh. So um, this was actually, this was a travel day. You know, you, to get somewhere, you just sit down for a long time and then all of a sudden you're in a new place. How early of an adopter were you of paper? Did you download it it's the, the day second, it came out? Like, it's, I mean, it might have been a couple of days old, yeah. but I grabbed it as, soon as, I, as soon as it came out. I love the tool. I'm not an artist, but I like doodling around and drawing and I played around with some different apps. So uh, sort of at the low end were something like um, Adobe Ideas. Very simple tool set, which I like. I like the simplicity, but it was too simple. And then at the other end were things like, uh, what is it, Sketchbook Pro or something. You know, incredibly powerful tool sets for professional you know, designers and artists and that kind of thing. But when I was playing with it, you know, the learning curve was really big and the tool set was so big that by the time you drilled down and got the tool you wanted and came back, I'd lost my train of thought or whatever. I don't know how you know, but you look at an app and you go, this is just going to work. There's something in the way it's presented that you just go, okay, it's going to be a, a simple enough but not too simple tool set that would allow me to just doodle around. If there was one thing that Microsoft taught me, it was a certain irreverence to technology. In 10 years there, I saw speech interfaces, gesture interfaces, multiple operating system, mobile phone operating system, multiple programming models. I mean, they keep trying. I mean, they see technology as completely malleable. And what you gain from that is really this understanding of appreciation that, yeah, technology is malleable. The most important thing is understanding what do you want to do with it? How should it look like? And for us, it was technology is there to help people create. That's what it's for. And that became such a focusing point. Anything that doesn't help you create, get rid of it. It shouldn't be there. Clock, not. You don't need a clock while you're creating. Battery meter, don't need it. So it's what do you really need to get going? And you need beautiful tools that work because beauty gives you meaning while you're creating. We think that beauty is very important to ideas. You have to, you have to be able to elevate your idea. If the first thing you see is, you know, when you try and capture an idea, if it looks bad, it just sets it off on the wrong tone and it kind of kills the idea. They're very fragile things, ideas. Your students, you know, are they, you know, because they're coming at it without a lot of the biases and sort of, um, I don't know, the, the inertia that comes with the way things ought to be, how do you think this is going to make them uh, when it comes to uh, storytelling mm. uh, as well as just, you know, uh, sort of how they process ideas? Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, I think the kids want to, by the time they get to high school where I teach, all of that's gone. If you want to see Wait, all, what's like all of that, that expressing themselves that huh. way. I teach a philosophy course and I, I'll often give the kids two apparently separate ideas and get them to try and find the connection. And if you think linearly, it's almost impossible to do. You really have to bust out of your usual thinking. So it was in the middle of class, and these are bright kids. You know, we're a university prep school, and kids go to Harvard and Stanford and all this kind of stuff. And they just weren't thinking. I remember just literally banging my head on the desk. I said, oh, for goodness sakes, you guys, would you just think for a second? And one of the students, top girl in the school kind of kid, said, Mr. O.C., we don't have time to think. We just need you to give us the answers so we can get them down and we can get our sixes and sevens so we can get into I the university. <laughs> we don't have time to think. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, they're, they're gaming the system. Wow. They, we need the marks to get to the universities we want to get to. Wow, that's how they're thinking about education. So when you give them a tool that allows them to just think, you give people a blank page and they often just free. I said, go make something. And they go, well, tell us what you want us to make. Mm. So they're not used to that. You know, you give any kid a piece of paper and a crayon and they'll scribble on it. And we've got to teach them how to, you know, draw and make notes and lay out the page and all the rest of it. And I'm finding with these technologies that I think are kind of liberating technologies, um, students at first are not used to using them. They want to go, where does the necessary information? So you give them something like this and say, sketch note it. Don't worry about the trivial data. We can look that up later. Let's capture the things we don't know or the things we find really exciting and use that to drive something. That's really foreign to the kids. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really big structures that, that force kids into that kind of envelope. 
where you know the, the big structure is I need to get to university, which means I need my GPA to be four point something, yeah. right? So if I'm going to play around with this, I'm taking a risk with my grades. So you need to create the space that allows them to do that too. Once it gets going, though, every time I've given kids that, I've been blown away by what they can do. You know, they surprise me every time. Because when I would describe the application, say to to an investor, and, and they would hear we were putting watercolor in it, you know, they would go bonkers. They'd be because they love watercolor. No, because they wanted PowerPoint <laughs> export. Right, there's like put export to PowerPoint in there. This is just, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Yeah. It's, it's there is no one if you ask them, do you do you need watercolor, and they're gonna say like no. Yeah. But you do. People actually do. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. All of a sudden, you're gaining a new skill. You can think in color. You can express it in color. Like color is meaningful. It's the choice between a red and a blue tie. That stuff matters. Yeah. It's just because you know you had a bad experience in art school when you're six or seven. Mm -hmm. No, but that need to be expressive is pervasive. So, I mean, these are certain things where you just can't, you can't listen to people. Yeah. You, you need to hear a little bit further. You need to, when they say, no, don't do watercolor, do PowerPoint, what they're really saying, you're seeing a deeper need and fear emerge, yes. which is like, uh, which is, I, I can't access this thing. And that is an opportunity. It's like, okay, this is good. You call my idea crazy. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I mean, you need that. If people don't call your ideas crazy or silly, then you're not working on the right thing. Building a product is hard. That's why I'm always telling founders, as soon as it's good enough, ship it. Now, these four guys basically got an education while they were at Microsoft in taking an idea and launching a product. They did it time and time again, but they couldn't build the product that they wanted until they left and started their own company. It's fitting that they would go on to create an app that allows anyone with an iPad to just get started creating beautiful things. And I want to live in a world where when someone sees a blank canvas, they're not intimidated, they're inspired. 